Okay. A lot of people on YouTube have been tooting their horn about how great it is that their state adopted a castle doctrine in 19, in 2005 and 2006. Let me tell you something. New York State adopted their castle doctrine in 1968. This is the New York State Penal Code. I got this for a law class I took a year ago. Now, this is public information. You can get this at the library. You can get this on Barnes & Noble. You can go on to your state and look for the state penal code of your state. Now, I am not a lawyer. I am also not your lawyer. Okay? I don't believe what ultra-liberals believe that you can just look up a penal law as you're being shot at by a criminal on your own property. You have to know the law in advance. Also keep in mind the law may change tomorrow. This book is published every two years, but over that two year period in the middle, a law can change. If possible, I'm going to go online and copy and paste these laws in as much detail as I'm allowed to in the description so that you can read along. I'm not going to read every single word because it will bore the shit out of you. And it'll take me four hours to do it, and I'm not going to do that shit. Okay? So, you have to know the law in advance. Now, our law, this is Article 35, it's called Defense of Justification. And I'm going to go over a couple of little examples here and there, because there's a few, maybe ten. And this talks about how you can legally defend yourself in what situation. Now, police officer is the highest level of, the, of person. That is, a police officer, a sheriff's deputy, a probation officer, a parole officer, a court officer, an FBI agent, a DEA agent, um, a U.S. Marshal, someone who is powered by the, by, the, by, the, by the government to carry a gun and enforce the law with a gun. They are police. Below them is peace, P-E-A-S-P-E-A-C-E. -E. Peace officers are beach lifeguards, firemen, parking enforcement. There are some government agencies that hire security guards. My county hires security guards to guard county buildings. They have 90% police power. They are peace officers, okay? So there's peace officer in the middle. At the bottom is anyone. Anyone literally means anyone. Is this camera still on? Hold on a minute. I want to make sure my camera still on. Thought I went off, man. I'm seeing things. And they will say a police officer may do this, a peace officer may do this, and, a, and anyone may do that. Okay? Police officers have absolute authority when pursuing criminals. They are never required to retreat, they are always allowed to stand their ground. They are always allowed to advance after a suspect, even if your state is not the castle doctrine. Castle doctrine aside, an officer of the law charging a suspect is exempt from all this stuff. Now, I know this is a good law because the Brady campaign opposes it. Even though this has been on the books since before the Brady campaign, the Brady campaign opposed New York State's self-defense laws they, I think they try to repeal a couple of them or reduce a couple of them because they believe that the Castle Doctrine will give a criminal, will give, give a, a gun owner who's dangerous, remember gun owners are dangerous, it'll give a gun owner the, se the sense of authority and he'll enact vigilante justice on his own property. Like the gun owner that shoots the guy in the back as he's carrying out a TV, okay? So the Bray campaign is against New York State's penal, New York State's, um, Castle Doctrine. That's how I know it's a good law. And anything the Brady campaign is against is good. Okay? Justification generally. Justification generally allows a parent or guardian, number one, allows a parent or guardian the ability to discipline their child. Hitting. Okay? Now, when does hitting become abuse? That's what the police officer, the prosecutor, and the judge discuss. 
If they agree you spanked the child, you're exempt under the castle doctrine. If they agree you beat the child, you're charged with child abuse. They interpret it, not me. But you are allowed to use physical discipline on your child. That's probably the most sensitive topic in the world as far as violence is concerned. But New York State does give parents of children under the age of 21 the authority to use physical force to correct their behavior. And also mentally retarded people over 21. There are people that are mentally challenged, retarded, uncomfortable word, but it's true. They are like children. They could be my age, but have the IQ of a five-year-old. You cannot leave them alone. You have to babysit them. And a parent of a mentally challenged adult may spank. And then there's obviously the warden or officer at the jail and prison. Carrier of passengers. Carrier of passengers is the bus driver. If the bus driver sees someone on his bus that is presenting a danger to the community, he has a right to get up from the bus, get up on the bus, and advance on that person. He can throw the person off the bus. He can use physical violence to detain the person. He can call the police if the person arrested. Okay, the bus driver on the bus is God. Once again, he's only allowed to use deadly force if he feels his life is in danger. But if he has to use a modest degree of force to maintain control, he will. That also goes for school bus drivers. I've seen school bus drivers pull over the bus, get up, and physically stop fights. They don't hit anybody, but they physically break up a fight. That's their job. They're exempt. So if you're on the bus, you're in a fist fight, and the bus really gets up and pulls you away, you can't sue them. Suicide. If I have a reasonable belief that someone is going to commit suicide, I can stop them. I don't want to kill them because that, that grants their wish, but if I see someone about to attempt suicide, I can legally use force to stop them. And if I am a military sniper who happens to have a rifle on me and I have to shoot the gun out of the person's hand, that's legal. That's an extreme case though. If I have to tackle the person, if I have to hit the person with a fire hose, I can stop them. And I can use violence to stop them. Because I don't want them jumping out the window, I don't want them slitting their own wrists, I don't want them hanging themselves. I'm allowed to stop them. Um, mental health patients, people in a mental institution. I had a professor when I took general psychology. She was five years older than me. She was 20, 30 at the time. Okay, barefoot, she was five feet even. Okay, fully clothed with two rolls of quarters in each pocket, she weighed 100 pounds. She told me a million ways to take a guy down. Okay, she could tackle and retain a person six feet tall. Mental institutions have security officers who are supposed to detain people that are going apeshit. But every person at the institution is taught basic self-defense, basic retention skills. They're allowed to tie people up. They're allowed to put people in straitjackets. They're allowed to lock them in confined rooms. They're allowed to do that. There has to be a report written. There's usually a surveillance camera around. Things are documented, but she has been injured herself and she hurt other people trying to get them into custody. That's bad, but if it's a toss up between her tackling a guy and breaking his wrist, or that guy strangling another patient, she's justified. That protects her and anyone in a mental institution. And then there's Article 6, committing larceny. I went over that already. I'm on my property, on my friend's property, and I stop a thief. I detain the thief.
35.15. I want to have time to go over it. I'm going to check my time for that actually today. Okay, I have time. 35.15. This is defense of another person. In summary, if I see a person that is in danger, I may legally use violence to stop that person from being harmed. If I see an old lady being purse snatched and I run over and I tackle the guy, knock him to the ground and punch him in the face, tough shit. Purse snatching is a robbery. He's using violence to take property from a person that is robbery. On top of that, she's an old lady. She might get killed when she falls and breaks her rib and, rib and has to go to the hospital for surgery. She might die. I can use force. The issue is with this, this is very, very controversial. The problem here is you must know the person is innocent, okay? If I see a guy snatching a person, an old lady, I know who's innocent and guilty. If I see a nine-year-old boy laying on the ground, bleeding from the head, and there's a guy standing over him with a baseball bat saying, die motherfucker, and bashing him with the baseball bat, I know who is wrong. Okay, however, if I see two guys of equal size, have had way too much to drink, and they start going on at each other, I'm going to stay out of that. Because I don't know who's right or wrong. If I go in there and I hit the person that is the victim, I can get in trouble. Also, I don't know if they're going to turn around and stab me or shoot me. So if I am not confident who the victim is, the phone, 911, good witness, that's all. You must know the person is innocent. You must know the person you're attacking is guilty. And it must be a 100%, no questions asked, unprovoked criminal attack. Believe it or not, this is going to go by a lot faster than I thought. I have a couple more to do. I only have a couple more to do and they're real fast. I'm going to stop now and go through the rest of them. I don't want to go over my time. 